Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now Live at 4 It's, it's Friday. Friday. Did your boy all moved in? I am exhausted. We were talking about it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Let me see your fingernails. They clean? Yeah. Oh, boy, that was a lot of work. Move-in day yesterday on the UW-Madison campus. It was madness down there. It is every year. It is every year. And now you're part of it. But he's <laughs> in. It's done. Let the new school year begin. Absolutely. Here we go. Absolutely. And we'll... Um, have Michael Bruno, as you heard, yep. coming up and the news sounds. But first, here's what's making news on this Friday. Madison police are still searching for suspects. They say we're in a gun battle this morning during rush hour on the Beltline. Jamie Perez will join us live. Governor Evers sets ambitious new goals for clean energy in Wisconsin. And Verona High School is making security changes ahead of the school year after fights broke out there last school year. Let's take a look outside today. It was a little sun, a little clouds, a little yeah, bit of everything. Very dark this morning. Yeah, it was. It's like it was storm but it's all north of Madison and a warm weekend on tap. Dave Caulfield's in the backyard kind of humid out there. Yeah feeling a little bit more like summer right now and into this weekend as well. Visible cloud track showing the clearing that we have been experiencing over the past couple of hours across southern Wisconsin. Doppler track pretty quiet for most of us. A few showers uh, closer to uh, north of uh, the Fox Valley and northeast of Madison. Live look in Madison on the WIC TV Skycam at those partly sunny skies and temperatures right now are in the upper 70s in Madison, 81 in Janesville, 80 in uh, Boscobel, and as we head towards Prairie du Chien, 78 degrees. Dew points have moved into the lower 60s, so it is noticeably stickier outside, and that humidity stays with us as we head into Saturday and Sunday with some more chances for showers and storms tonight, though. I don't think we'll see any more storms. Temperatures will fall through the 70s into the 60s under partly cloudy skies, maybe some patchy fog as we start off Saturday morning. Now let's take a look at your first alert traffic update. Rimrock Road and the Beltline not looking too bad. A little bit of slow go starting to show up on the uh, Beltline, as you might expect for this time of the afternoon, but no major accidents or incidents to report across Dane County. Traffic is generally heading out at the posted speed, starting to see those brake lights though as we head out of Madison. Eastbound Verona Road to John Nolan, a little bit slow right now at 11 minutes for a drive time. Average speed of around 25 miles per hour. Some other routes in and around Madison looking good. The Beltline to Janesville uh, will cost you 27 minutes with an average speed of around 65 miles per hour. And there's your first alert traffic update. We'll talk more about that warmer weekend and what to expect as we get into next week, we could see another cool down by the middle of next week in your first alert forecast. All right, we'll check back in a little while. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. Top of the news today, police are still searching for the suspects involved in a shooting that happened on the Beltline this morning. Officers tell us they have found both of the cars involved, and now they're looking for any information from witnesses who saw the shooting happen. Our Jamie Perez is live on the Beltline around the area where this all happened. Jamie? Well, actually, the evening rush hour traffic is just starting to pick up, kind of like this morning, but this morning was a little bit different. They got a bit of an unexpected surprise here on the Beltline. Police are calling this a gun battle, what happened earlier. Witnesses say they saw someone in a Durango stand up while driving on the Beltline and shoot at a Malibu from the sunroof of their car. Police say several rounds were exchanged between the two cars, but no injuries to report at this time. Now, police say the Durango drove off of Rimrock Road. The Malibu kept driving on the Beltline, and police were able to find both cars later, but they didn't find any suspects. They do consider them armed and dangerous. Now, this is just the latest gun-related incidents that happened in Madison over the last few weeks, and police are working with partnering agencies to prevent more of these incidents from happening in the future. We're dealing with a lot of very concerning uh, incidents of gunfire in Madison. Have we seen something like this, a gun battle at rush hour on the Beltline? I don't recall that, uh, but again, we've had incidents recently where we've had people shooting and we've got bullets flying into homes where innocent people are sleeping. So I don't want to put one above the other. They're all scary. And Joel Despain says even though we've seen a lot of gun violence in the last few weeks, he says we're actually down about 30 percent for the amount of shots fired this year compared to previous years. But even with that said, Joel says that this is still very concerning. Now, earlier this morning, there were a lot of people on the belt line. It was during rush hour, if you remember. And so he says that there's a lot of people who witnessed this gunfire happening and they haven't really heard from too many people, but they need to hear from you to help with their investigation. So if you know anything about these gunshots that were fired, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. Scary situation. Jamie Perez reporting live from the belt line. Thank you. 
Madison police are also investigating shots fired on the city's west side early this morning. Half past midnight, officers responded to the 5800 block of Russet Road near Toki Middle School after callers reported hearing gunfire. There have not been any reports of injuries or damage. Officers did find a shell casing during the initial investigation. New at four, Governor Evers says a newly created office will move Wisconsin to 100% clean energy by 2050. At an event this afternoon, the governor signed Executive Order 38, which creates the Office of Sustainability and Clean Energy. Governor Evers says the office will ensure the state of Wisconsin fulfills the carbon reduction goals set forth in the 2015 Paris Climate Accord. In 2017, President Donald Trump withdrew the United States from that agreement because he believed it hurts American businesses and workers. But Evers says time is running out to take action against climate change. Everybody's working together on this issue. We're changing the conversation about it. We're moving forward as a state. The, three of us are the governor hopes state agencies will work together with utility companies to create a feasible plan. Well, you may have noticed more of those pesky mosquitoes biting recently, and they could be carrying a big health concern. 36 states, including Wisconsin, are now reporting West Nile virus infections in people, birds, and mosquitoes. The Centers for Disease Control say there have been 128 cases of West Nile disease in people this year, and four of them have died. Cases with severe disease are also on the rise. One in five individuals will get sick. They'll develop a fever, sometimes fever and a rash, uh, and a headache, and then a subset of those individuals will progress to what we call neuroinvasive disease, where the virus actually crosses into the central nervous system to cause encephalitis. Protecting yourself from mosquito bites is critical. The CDC recommends using inst insect repellent containing DEET, pic uh, picaridin, or oil of lemon eucalyptus, and limiting your time outside at dusk and at dawn. Michigan Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib is rejecting Israel's latest offer to visit. The government reversed its decision to ban her from the country by allowing her to enter on humanitarian grounds. Nicole Killian has more on the controversy from the White House. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib says she will not go to Israel after all. Israeli leadership said it would allow her to visit family in the West Bank if she promised not to discuss a boycott of Israel during her stay. Tlaib said on Twitter the conditions go against everything she believes in. Her uncle also rejected those conditions and said, It's Rashida's right as a Palestinian to come and visit her family and country. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had banned Tlaib and fellow Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, both of whom are Muslim, because they support a boycott of Israel over its treatment of Palestinians. Omar responded on Twitter saying, let's be clear, the goal of our trip was to witness firsthand what is happening on the ground in Palestine and hear from stakeholders, our job as members of Congress. Netanyahu was responding to pressure from President Trump, who suggested the prime minister should ban the Democratic congresswoman. I think it would be a terrible thing, frankly, for Israel to let these two people who speak so badly about Israel come in. And they have become amazingly the face of the Democrats. Former U.S. ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro says the president is playing politics. He has said is the Democrats are an anti-Israel party and anti-Semitic parties. These are absurd slurs, but he's trying to get those ideas uh, cemented into the, into the public discourse. Republican Senators Marco Rubio and Susan Collins joined Democrats in protesting Israel's decision, as did the powerful pro-Israeli lobby, AIPAC, which said the Congresswoman should be allowed to visit. Nicole Gillian, CBS News, the White House. Israeli's interior minister, who said Tlaib could make the trip on humanitarian grounds to visit her grandmother, responded to her rejecting the offer, tweeting, her hate for Israel overcomes her love for her grandmother. 
Former NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his family are recovering after their small plane ran off a runway and caught fire in East Tennessee yesterday. The Cessna Citation slammed into a fence that wrapped around the plane and then ran off the runway. Paramedics were seen tending to Earnhardt. His wife and one-year-old daughter and two pilots all managed to escape unharmed. Investigators have recovered the cockpit voice recorder and the surveillance video from buildings in the area. More local news now. Verona Area High School is updating its safety and security plans ahead of the start of the new school year. This includes an updated fight intervention protocol. Our Amanda Quintana is here with the details on that. Amanda? Well, this comes after there were three fights in just one day at the high school in May where three students were arrested and an ambulance was called. Today, in a letter to families, the principal explains a list of changes they should expect this upcoming school year. Some new things include three security guards, a new fight intervention protocol with trained staff ready to step in, an anonymous tip line to submit safety concerns through an app, phone, text, email, or online, and a proactive visibility team, a group of staff working to find out if there are any conflicts brewing among students. The district is also trying to change the language used for family members who are called to school after a student conflict and they want to provide information to families sooner. The letter ends by saying despite these clear policies, the district believes the most impactful strategy is building strong relationships with students and their families. All right, Amanda, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. There's more at four. When we come back, it's going to be a very arty weekend in Fitchburg. When we come back, we'll preview the 11th annual Agora Art Fair. That's when Live at Four continues. You're watching News 3 Now, live at four.
Well, in a new effort to fight climate change, a UK university has decided hamburgers have to go. Burgers, burritos, anything beef will be off the menu at Goldsmiths University of London when classes start next month. It's a decision that the student union made with school staff to try to reduce carbon emissions. The campus of 10,000 students known for its eco-friendly initiatives is also trying to limit the use of bottled water and disposable cups, tacking on an extra 12 cent charge. The UN report says methane gas and other greenhouse gases that come from raising livestock are exacerbating climate change. Scientists recommend eating more grains and vegetables instead. Well, stocks ended a wild week with a rally, but still posted their third straight weekly decline. The Dow Industrials added 306 points, closing at 25,886. The Nasdaq Composite was up 129. The S&P 500 gained 41. Well, if you missed Art Fair on the Square this year, there's another chance to catch a great local art fair this weekend in Fitchburg. The 11th annual Agora Art Fair features the work of more than 100 artists, plus a chance to learn more about graffiti art. Carrie Osborne is the communications director for the Agora art fair and graffiti artist C3 join us today welcome to live at four great Thank to see you, you both right. thanks for having us so Carrie oh boy the 11th annual already yeah it's amazing. tell yeah. us about this art fair well the artists really love this particular fair just because the setting is so beautiful you've got this really nice architecture on one side and then you've got the the prairie landscape on the other side so it just really lends itself to you know landscape art and uh, everybody it's it's an easy art fair to tour and besides the fact we've got food, we've got drink, we've got food carts, we've got uh, adult beverages, we've got live music on two stages, so there's just a, a, a lot to to bring you there and keep you there. And it's easily accessible, you, you know, lots of parking. Lots of parking, it's all free, yep, and then they'll shuttle you in. Okay, artists from all over? Uh, regional and local, uh, C3 here is uh, Chicago based and, and we, we do branch out, but we, we want to make sure that it's got the uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, you know, um, regional feel. C3, tell us about your art. Uh, well, actually, I do, uh, well, I guess, what's considered street art, but um, it's uh, mural-based, mostly outdoor stuff. Uh, we do large-scale artwork, uh, use, you know, aerosol paint and whatnot. Uh, but we do come out and, you know, we, we usually try to tailor our murals uh, for whatever uh, space we're doing. So, for example, if we're doing a regional piece, like here in Madison, we try to cater to whatever the theme is or, or the direction they give us. So we do a lot of stuff that's uh, big, large color blocking, very graphically designed, uh, a lot of dark colors. Uh, you know, mural art is meant to see, meant to be seen from afar. So you know, everything is 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 paid or painted large scale, so that when you see it from afar, it all kind of renders and comes into oh, focus. I love that. Are you yeah. producing something I can pick up and take home with me, or do I have to bring you a wall? <laughs> well, <laughs> normally what we paint is rather large, so it could be anywhere from you know 20 feet to 200 feet. Wow. It really yeah. depends on the space and the client or what we're doing. Carrie, show us a couple of the things that you brought us, a little bit of a sampling of what you might find this weekend. Well, I'll show you this one in my lap right here. here. This is uh, from an artist named Terry Sullivan. Um, this is, I believe... Um, camera two over here. Sue's camera two. There here we go. go. Look at this beautiful piece. Um, you can see another one of his pieces on our advertising where he's taking his three daughters fishing. Oh, so very is, nice. So is that watercolor? This is, this is watercolor, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, right? he's, yeah the he's, detail is amazing. Yeah, he's a returnee, and, and um, we love having him here. And then this glass work here. This bowl here that you see is from an artist named Carol Wydra, Solvici glass, and it's all food safe, no chemicals, so you slow, throw your mashed potatoes in there, no problem, and then... Um, the necklace here that we're gonna we're gonna arm wrestle for later. <laughs> so how, beautiful. How many artists in all are you gonna be? Uh, about about a um, hundred. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. This grows every year. It does. It, well, it can't grow too big because mm -hmm. then it would be too big. So they're uh, quite particular about who they let in, which is why we're so happy to to have some of these artists. Uh, Jennifer Damro, I've got to give the name of the yeah. lady who built this so beautiful is it jury? necklace. Is it jury? Uh, yes, it is. And C3, are you going to be doing live demonstrations, like teaching people about graffiti? Well, we're going to be out there, and we always uh, uh, we always engage with the uh, you know the people that are out there. So I will be painting live. Uh, all people are welcome to come out, say hi to us. You know, they could ask uh, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and they all get to learn a little bit about the process of it. Maybe so, get an appreciation for it, oh, too. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we'll have a community wall out there, so if they want to paint or they want to try, <laughs> 
Come on oh, out. That's a great idea. Get yeah. on. They can they can give it a little hand, and maybe we could all have a little bit of graffiti in everybody. <laughs> so, so you like this fair? This is a good one. Oh, I lo I love it. I'm just really appreciative of the the opportunity and, and to the Agora people for bringing us out, and hopefully we could do more stuff like this. Yeah, absolutely. I hope what, so. And it should have great weather the way it sounds. Yes. Raining that night. So. Yeah. Well, it's rain or shine, but okay. yeah, sun, oh, well, yeah, sunshine we'll always there. helps. <laughs> yeah, we'll be out there. All right. Great well, to see you both. Have a great weekend. Thank us. you for having us. The Agora Art Fair is tomorrow at the Agora on Cheryl Parkway in Fitchburg. It's from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's free. For more information, go to agoraartfair.com. There's more to come tonight at 4 when we come back. A look at the new movie, Blinded by the Light. And then coming up at 5, how city leaders are reacting to a recent string of shots fired in the area. We'll be right back. Well, take a look at this. You're looking at Isabella and her father, Phil, making a grand entrance <laughs> as they ride a zip line into her wedding ceremony in Michigan. I love this. It's a new twist on the old phrase. Here comes the bride, her fiance, Ryan, grinning from ear to ear as she zips down to meet him. Dun, 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 dun. Now, that's Zoom. something you never seen <laughs> yeah, before. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> We'd have had a better shot except that oh, drone like crashed into the... Oh, oh no. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, a Minnesota couple got a front row seat for a real life nature show. And this is awesome. You have to see this. The couple was cruising along the St. Croix River when they saw, see the, uh, saw. when they saw this bald eagle. There we go. <laughs> they say they saw this bald, uh, bald eagle on top of the water. They first thought it was injured, but upon closer inspection, this bird of prey was fighting for its mid-afternoon meal. The eagle had a 10-pound muskie wow. in its talons. <laughs> the fish was so heavy, the bird uh, couple fly, so it 
used its j oh couldn't fly so it used its <laughs> wings and sheer determination reading is hard uh, to swim to shore and pull the fish out of the water the couple came back an hour later to see the raptor devouring its shoreline lunch so the eagle won the <laughs> eagle has landed eventually wow. yeah. and, well the muskie tried to get away and it got it back out of the water again wow that's amazing. That's like me when I go up to the buffet and like my plate <laughs> is like crumbling. <laughs> like, I can do it. <laughs> and get back to the table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing video. Yeah. yeah. And a pretty humid weather. Yeah, it feels a little bit more like summer this weekend with temperatures back into the 80s. A couple of chances for showers and storms that we'll have to dodge. So we'll time all of that out in your first alert forecast in just a few muskies. Minutes. <laughs> Good afternoon. I hope you had a great Friday so far. We started off with a couple of showers, especially north of Madison this morning. Pretty dark skies as well, but we have seen that clearing throughout the afternoon hours and plenty of sunshine greets us now across southern Wisconsin. We could see that on visible cloud track. Pretty cool counterclockwise flow. You could see where that center of the low pressure system is on satellite, but that is breaking apart as we speak. Still a chance of an isolated shower or two, and one of those uh, showers is moving closer closer to Lake Michigan, not really going to affect South Central Wisconsin. Uh, but I think that uh, the shower chances start to go up as we get into later on Saturday and early Sunday morning is when the uh, best chance of needing that umbrella is. So I mentioned those showers just north of Madison, and I mean just north and south of Madison, nada, nothing and zilch, but some spots picking up about an inch to an inch and a half of rain from those showers earlier on this morning. Our time lapse in Platte on the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam showing the clouds starting us off, but then that blue sky breaking through by the afternoon. And we're looking at partly sunny skies right now in this part of Grant County, moving to Dane County on the Edgewater Sky Cam. The capital looking very nice on this Friday afternoon in Madison on those partly sunny skies. Today's high right on the button, 80 degrees. 
which is exactly normal for this time of year. And our low temperature of 63 was a little bit above normal, so a little bit of a milder start out there this morning. I think that save an isolated shower or two tonight will be probably dry across southern Wisconsin. Then as we head into tomorrow, can't rule out maybe a stray shower or storm. But I really think the best chance of needing that umbrella gets here late Saturday and early Sunday morning. So I wouldn't cancel any plans this weekend. It's actually looking pretty nice, although the humidity is a bit elevated compared to where we have been. And really, this is the dream scenario for getting all those plans done, having those shower chances or best storm chances during the overnight hours. And I think that's the case as we head into this weekend. Temperatures are in the upper 70s in Madison, low 80s in Monroe and Janesville, 78 in Watertown and 80 in Basketball and Prairie du Chien. Dew points, though, have risen a little bit, and it's noticeably more humid. Not crazy humid, but definitely not as comfortable as it has been across southern Wisconsin. 62, that dew point in Madison. So we went from comfortable to a little bit sticky outside. Still not entirely uncomfortable, but possibly getting a little bit more humid over the next couple of days. Feeling like summer as we get into this weekend and to start early next week. But then it does look like some more pleasant weather returns by the middle of the week with temperatures in the upper 70s Wednesday and Thursday near 80 on Friday. And I think we'll be rain free for a lot of that stretch before some more showers possible during the weekend hours for tonight. Light and variable winds temperatures in the low 60s, partly cloudy, mild. We could see some areas of fog developing by early tomorrow morning by tomorrow afternoon that is warm and humid highs in the mid 80s or low to mid 80s 83 is sometimes a tough one to describe uh, but uh, temperatures will be in the 80s for this weekend again outside chance of maybe some areas of fog forming tomorrow morning then by the time we get to the afternoon future tracks still trying to bring in a shower or two during the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. So we'll be ready for that, but I think most of us will stay dry. Can't say that though for later on Saturday into early Sunday morning, a broad area of scattered showers and storms possible late Saturday into early Sunday. But we should clear out by the time we get to Sunday afternoon with highs once again in the mid 80s. We're generally looking at about a half an inch to maybe an inch of rain from those scattered showers and storms by the time we get to later on Sunday. But there could be some isolated areas that get a little bit more than that. Seven to 10 day forecast. We're looking at those 80s sticking around to start next week, but we'll be in the upper 70s with more pleasant conditions as we get into next Wednesday and Thursday. All right, thank you, Dave. The director of Bend It Like Beckham is back with another tale of a teen who feels out of place. But this film has a very specific soundtrack. David Daniel has the story. First day, start at the top and stay there. Stay away from the girls! I want to be a writer, but my family is stuck in another century. Blinded by the Light stars Vivek Kalra as Javed, a British Pakistani teen in the 1980s who finds his voice when a friend gives him the music of Bruce Springsteen. Guard these with your life, yeah? You can thank me later. Reluctant at first, Javed quickly becomes obsessed with the boss. His journey is based on the memoir by Safraz Manzoor. I can feel it all right here. It's like Bruce knows everything I've ever felt, everything I've ever wanted. Somebody who is so far from New Jersey, from a different generation, from a different nationality, from a different religious background, from a different skin colour, gets the music of Bruce Springsteen and it absolutely speaks to him. Director Gurinder Chadha sought and received Bruce's blessing to use his music. I had an incredible responsibility now because here was a man who I revered, who was giving me his life's work, basically. And I had to sort of now picturize this in a way that not only appealed to Bruce fans, but non-Bruce fans, but also was relevant to the story that I was telling. Bruce sings about not letting the hardness of the world stop you from letting the best of you slip away. My hope is to build a bridge to my ambitions, but not a wall between my family and me. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, it does look good. We'll find out what Will Loper thinks about it Monday. Bend It Like Beckham is one of my all-time favorite yeah. movies, so. Look, and you got to like the, the boss. Yeah, exactly. That looks like a good one. Well, NASCAR racing legend is coming back to his roots tonight. When we come back, hear from Cambridge native Matt Kenseth ahead of his return to the Madison International Speedway. That's coming up next.
How about that? There's a live picture of San Diego today. Beautiful. Wow, that is beautiful. Gives you a little summer inspiration, doesn't it? That's gorgeous. NASCAR legend and Cambridge native Matt Kenseth returns to the racetrack this weekend. He's racing in the Howie Leto Classic 100 at the Madison International Speedway in Oregon tonight. Melissa Kim joins us now with a preview of tonight's race. Hello, it's hello. It's nice to see these homes. I know. I mean, it's been a while since he's been around here in this area in general. It's been a while since Matt Kenseth has raced at Madison International Speedway. The last time he was here on his home track, 2014. The Cambridge native was a regular fixture at MIS, racing there weekly from 1993 to 1995. He was the track champion in 1994 before he went on to a storied NASCAR career where he was Rookie of the Year in 2000 and won the championship in 2003. Now, he did step away from racing full time after the 2017 season, but says it always brings back good memories to race at MIS. Yeah, I mean, I'll let you know at the end of the night, you know, how it, how it feels, but it's fun just to come back here. I mean, it's fun to, you know, to drive in here and we did it, you know, every Friday night during the summer for, for so many years. And, and obviously the, the time goes by really, really, really fast and uh, kind of brings back a lot of memories from getting your car ready to go on Friday and getting it loaded up and driving out here in the hauler and getting ready to race every Friday night. So it kind of, kind of brings back a lot of that. So it's, uh, it's neat, to, neat to get back out here. So uh, what is he up to now? Well, he has four school-aged daughters. He said he's been spending the summer going to the beach, going to the mountains, and now he's just getting ready to put his girls in school now. I mean, I'm sure having four kids takes up a lot of time. Oh, yeah. And so he's getting to spend a lot more time with his family. He said he doesn't have any more races, though, left on his schedule for this year. So this might be it for him for this year. So where does he live full-time? He lives here, still home full-time. Oh, so yeah. he's still yeah. here full-time. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, so, you know, to be able to do that, I think a lot of athletes, especially after they're kind of done with their careers, they like to be able to spend that time with their family, especially when your kids are younger, you know oh, what I mean? Definitely. It's nice to be home, to be able to put them on the school bus. Yeah, with, with four kids, that's a, little, that's a risky occupation. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little more than racing, right? All right, thank you. Thanks, Melissa, good to see you. Well, still to come at four, the new musical Hephaestus has its world premiere on the UW campus this evening. Our Michael Bruno goes backstage for Music Theater of Madison's production of the show, written by a Madison native. That's when Live at Four continues.
Good afternoon. Here is your Friday first alert traffic update. Taking a live look at Rimrock Road in the Beltline. We are noticing that very slow go right now. Eastbound, westbound not looking too bad. Average speeds on the Beltline, especially eastbound, about 15 to 25 miles per hour. Closer to Park Street, things looking pretty good though on Stoughton Road. Here are your drive times at University Avenue eastbound to the interstate. That'll cost you 22 minutes with an average speed of around 40 miles per hour. And some other routes in and around Madison. Southbound Sun Prairie to downtown is running a little bit slow low at 10 minutes with an average speed of around 15 miles per hour. That's your first alert traffic update. All right, Dave, thank you. A world premiere of a new musical debuts in the play circle at UW Memorial Union. It's called Hephaestus and it's written by Madison native Nathan Fossbinder. Nathan is a La Folla High School grad who got a grant to write the musical being staged by the Music Theater of Madison. Our Michael Bruno went backstage to check it out. Lay. I craft weapons for Ares, war after war, but what do they call me? Hephaestus is the lame-legged Greek god who was born solely of his mother Hera, and he is the god of fire, or the smiting god, um, which means he crafts all of the metalworks and makes beautiful jewelry and armor for his brother Ares. Um, but Hera... Despite loving her sons equally, she says this numerous times, she really has a favorite son, and unfortunately it is not Hephaestus. And through the course of the story, uh, some of the story that the audience might be most familiar with is she becomes enraged with her family, all of the drama that is going on, and particularly with Hephaestus, who sets her off, and she pushes him off Mount Olympus to be down with the earthlings, the humans, the mortals. It isn't his fault, well don't blame his mother. He's disgusting, he's odd, he's hopelessly flawed. And eventually Hephaestus creates a throne that entraps Hera. Uh, and Hera is stuck sitting in her throne and through this scheme Everyone learns that Hephaestus is godly after all. So how in the world did you first come up with a thought to make a musical? I, that's a very good question. I attended the Boston Conservatory for musical theater performing, and uh, my second year there, I, I knew I wanted to make something, but I didn't really know how, so I just kind of started typing in Greek myth things. That was the first thing that came to mind. And slowly as I looked through all of them, I, I kind of knew everyone's story. I knew Zeus, I knew Aphrodite, I knew all of those characters. And I came across Hephaestus and it was a story that hadn't been told before. And, and I started to delve into his story, being the only disabled God, being the only God to return from the ground and, and decided that he would be an, an interesting subject. There's so much yet for me to be, so much more than less. My character, Athena, uh, is part of uh, what we've been referring to as the trio in this show. Uh, Hermes and Dionysus are uh, Athena's brothers, and we uh, kind of sneak in the background and watch what everyone is doing and saying on Olympus and um, are basically just kind of in everyone's business. And what's it like creating a character that's never been performed before? Because this is the world premiere of the show, right? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, when you Google Hephaestus, you see this like old, huge Greek god. So at first I was like, how am I going to do this? Because I'm 5'8", 19 year old. I don't look like what people assume Hephaestus would look like. Um, so it's been fun kind of digging deep into the character and figuring out his mentality and who he is emotionally, because physically I'm not going to embody what people know him to be yet. Ben, ben, ben. Michael's here now, the world premiere. Tonight. Yes, it is the world premiere, and it's a very little-known story. I mean, he's one of the gods that, 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 that people don't really know that much about in mythology. I had to look up how to pronounce it. Uh, it it's a very difficult thing, but I've been trained by Megan to say Hephaestus. Hephaestus. <laughs> yes. And who did the music? The music sounds beautiful. The music is wonderful. It, 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 I guess it's all these different kind of, 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 of themes and different kind of genres of music that he's written for it. And, of course, the voices for Music Theater oh. Madison are always astonishing. Megan really finds the most talented people in Madison 
uh, to, to do her musicals there. Yeah, it looks, looks interesting. Yeah, it really, is, it really is interesting. It's really fun to kind of see a different story. You hear about all the other gods in Olympus. We were to hear this story. Learn something. Yes. It is Hephaestus. It is at the Play Circle Theater on the UW campus tonight at 7.30, uh, next weekend as well. And there's a Sunday matinee. Go to mtmmadison.com for tickets. And next week? Next week, we're going to the brand new Performing Arts Center at Edgewood High School, the Dennis McKinley Performing Arts Center. A little tour? My, yes, a little tour of my Your alma, alma mater. mater. Yes. It's come a long way. It has. As, as you have as well. Yes, that's, that's very true. <laughs> Michael, thank you. Thanks, Michael. See you next week. Final check of your forecast coming up. It's back a little sticky out there. Yeah, the humidity uh, helping with some showers east of Madison. I think most of us will stay dry this evening, though. But we do have that one shower crossing into Walworth County and closer to Lake Michigan. Temperatures right now in the upper 70s and low 80s across southern Wisconsin. So pretty typical of this time of year. Live look in Madison at those partly sunny skies. Just really nice conditions, but that humidity is elevated a bit, especially compared to days past that dew point in the low 60s calm winds though so I guess we have that going for us <laughs> could have some areas of fog overnight mild and partly cloudy tonight with temperatures falling into the lower 60s your day planner for tomorrow highs in the mid 80s with an outside chance of a shower and storm in the afternoon I think the better chances for showers and storms arrive overnight into early Sunday morning could get a, a good soaking rain out of that but the rest of Sunday Pretty nice. Yeah, I think we'll clear out by the afternoon. All yeah. right. Thanks, Thank Dave. And Monday here on Live at 4, we'll meet our pet of the week from the Dane County Humane Society. And we'll meet a Monticello teacher who's helping her students beat the summer slide. She's our top-notch teacher. That's coming up Monday on Live at 4.
Lola and Louie have found some very unusual zoo babies this week. Let's find out what they are in this week's edition of the News Hounds Now Update. It's News Hounds Now Update with Lola and Louie. This week on the News Hounds Now Update, an itchy grizzly. Chicago's new otters. And an ostrich is free as a bird. But first, the Chester Zoo has welcomed the arrival of three rock hyrax pups. The boy and two girls weigh no more than half a pound and are yet to be named. The rock hyrax is native to Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. And get this, the tiny furry mammals are closely related to elephants. Also at the Chester Zoo, a rare Malayan taper, also known as an Asian taper, was born last month. Baby tapers have distinctive coats when they're first born, made up of a series of spots and stripes to help camouflage them on the forest floors in their native Southeast Asia. The coat slowly changes over the first six months to the unique black and white pattern of their parents. This little guy has been named Roni following a public vote. Looks like a trip to Chicago is in order. Two southern sea otter pups rescued last month off the coast of Monterey Bay, California, were introduced to the media at the Shedd Aquarium. The male pups are not biologically related. The playful pair each weigh about 20 pounds and eat the equivalent of a third of their body weight every day. The average adult male sea otter weighs about 75 pounds. Did you know the ostrich is the fastest bird in the world?